So when you first buy an EV, the first thing you're probably gonna look into is how you're going to charge it. And for most people, that means home charging. And when you're looking at home charging, you've got a few different options there as well, but most of the charging options break down to either just simple or sometimes called dumb charging, where you're essentially just plugging a charger into an existing outlet, or even when hardwired, this is a simple charger that when you plug it into your vehicle, it charges it and that's about it. But there's also some smart options on the market for some more advanced analytics and just more data that comes with charging your car. So some vehicles out there will track a lot of this for you, but if your vehicle doesn't have those sorts of analytics, then an app or a smart connected charger may help fill the gap there and even give you some more data than your car may give. So with that, today we're gonna to be looking at the Emporia EV charger. And let's kind of break this review into two parts. So first I'm gonna talk about the hardware and then we'll jump into the app and talk about some of those features. So first on the hardware side, I think this is a really simple design here. I don't think this is anything too crazy. Some of the home chargers just get a little bit too nuts with the branding and logos and things on them. So Emporia keeps it relatively simple here, which I liked. It's also got really clear lights to just help troubleshoot and see what's going on with the charger. So you've got a light for the power going to the charger. You've got a light for the connection to Wi-Fi, and then you've got a light for charging as well as a fault light. So depending on how those are lit up, you can quickly diagnose and see what's going on with the charger. In terms of some of the specs here, this is rated for indoor and outdoor use. So if you're gonna be charging outdoors, this is an option for you as well if you wanna mount on the side of your house or condo. And then the charger I got actually came as either a hardwired or uh, NEMA 1450 plug, which is nice. So if you have an existing NEMA plug for another charger or just have that wired in your charging spot already, this can be a nice plug and play type charger. With the NEMA 1450 plug, you are limiting the output of this charger down to 40 amps instead of the full 48 you would get with a hardwired option. But still, this is a nice option to be able to plug and play and get charging going. Only downside to this NEMA 1450 plug that's included is it is relatively short, so you'll have to mount the charger relatively close to where that NEMA plug is existing. The version I have here is white with the J1772 plug, but Emporia is now offering this in both black and white as well as an option for the Tesla or Nax plug. If you want the most flexibility, I generally recommend the J1772 plug since you can just use the adapter that is included with Tesla vehicles to charge those and since most vehicles haven't switched over to Nax yet. A couple of downsides I noticed here just on the hardware piece of the charger. Uh, this can be, I guess, a good and bad thing, but this does have a 25 foot cable. So a lot of reach on this cable. If you do need to mount the charger farther away from your charge port, you can reach there. But if you are charging close to your vehicle like I am, I've got maybe a three foot span from the charger to the plug. This can just lead to a lot of cable just being wound up or sitting on the floor if you don't have it wound up. And also I noticed the cable is relatively thick compared to my Tesla charger that I just had installed. So I'm testing that one as well, may do a review on that, but I've noticed the Tesla cable, even though it's got the same output as the Emporia charger, has a much thinner cable. So not sure exactly why that is, uh, but this is one of the thicker cables I've seen on home chargers. Uh, that I've reviewed. But advantage to that thicker cable is it does just give a more industrial feel. This charger looks like it can take a beating. I'm not gonna do any kind of stress testing or anything like that on it, but it does feel really solid. Looks like it's gonna hold up to a lot of use. Now let's jump into the software side of things. First off, the setup was relatively easy. Once you're getting it set up, you can tell it what size breaker it's attached to, what you need to limit current to, if it's hardwired, if it's on the NEMA plug, just letting the charger know all these things so it can adjust the current. And one thing about this charger before I get into the app and show you some of the features is that this is actually part of kind of the Emporia ecosystem. So Emporia has a lot of different smart home uh, features and products that can build out an entire suite here that works with the EV charger, including some load management and devices that can monitor the usage on the rest of your panel and live adjust the output on your charger. So if you're somebody that does have a limited size panel, this may be a good option to look into just so you can still charge your car when you're not using as much energy at home. 
Unfortunately, I didn't get to test some of these products, but just know that this is a main feature and main uh, positive of the Emporia unit is that it has those, uh, those integrations with the Emporia ecosystem. So if we jump into the Emporia app here, we can see a lot of different things. I've been playing with this the past week or so, and there's just so many different things that you can adjust in the app here. First off, when you open it, it's just gonna show you whatever you have chosen as your unit of measure for your charger. So if I go over here on the left side, you can change that unit of measurement. Right now I'm in currency, so it's actually live showing me what I'm spending on charging, which is pretty interesting. But I can switch that to amps, for example. I've got this on a smaller size breaker than uh, the NEMA 1450 plug typically has. I'm only on a 30 amp breaker, so we're only gonna see around 24 amps out of the charger there. You can also change that to kilowatts if you wanna see what that's looking like, or watts. So we're at about 5.8 kilowatts, I guess. Um, and then if we jump into here, we can also look at volts. So we're at 240 volts. And then we can also see gallons of gas, carbon, there's just all of these different kind of fun things you can see in here, just live what your, uh, what your energy use is looking like. And at the bottom, I've got the second minute hour, you can change the time frame on this. So this is just gonna show whatever time frame I'm at right now. So this is just showing the live unit of measure. Let's just switch this back to watts and then look at the graphical view. And you can actually see a graph of what your charging is looking like, which is pretty interesting. And this is live from the charger. So if you want to live monitor any of this stuff, this is great. I've also noticed I'm showing kilowatts right now. And you can see I just started charging. So that kind of ramped up. That's why you're seeing that vertical line there. And then as I adjust over to the right, I change to minutes. That is showing me kilowatts as well. Every minute by minute what I've been charging at. As soon as I get to hours, it's actually showing me how many kilowatt hours, so how much total energy I've been using during those different hours. So I can expand that out to days, weeks, and months. So I've only had this charger a short amount of time, but you can see some of my data there and how much I've been charging with it. With all that uh, graph, you can also change the units, units of measure here. So we could switch to amps. And if we wanna see by minute or even the live amp output, you can see that here as well. So again, you can see that ramp up to around 25 and then it drops down to 24 amps and that's what we're charging at right now. Let's look at some of the other units of measure. You can see voltage as well. So same kind of thing here. If I jump over to management, this is where we can also control some of the smart features of the charger as well. So you can see all the different options we have here. Uh, integrations with utility programs, uh, see what different saving opportunities I may have. And I think the important parts here for most people, uh, especially if your car doesn't have these features already, is both time of use and peak demand management. So with time of use, you can set a schedule with the charger here. So I can either just choose to charge during off-peak hours, and it's going to pick those hours automatically for me. Uh, or I can set a custom schedule here and add what times uh, I want to start charging and stop charging. So I can either do a time-based or if you have solar, you can kind of work with that system to integrate that here as well. So a lot of different options here. We've also got peak demand management. This is where you're gonna integrate that Emporia view energy monitor is what they call it. So that's where you can set those limits across your home and keep it below that. If you do have a utility program, you can enroll in that as well. And you've got the ability to do that here. Not sure if Emporia has any of that uh, in my utility program. I, I, I'm on a smaller utility, so I don't have any kind of EV specific programs, but it looks like you can integrate with those as well. And then lastly here on the right, we've got notifications. So if your charger does go down for whatever reason, power goes off, it goes offline, whatever, you are gonna get a push notification about that. So you can see when I was doing some testing with another charger, I unplugged the Emporia and plugged in another charger and it alerted me that it was offline. And this was relatively quick. This was it within a few minutes that it alerted me. So it's con constantly monitoring this and you can see if your charger does go offline. So another feature here, I know this is in the Tesla app. So I know a lot of Tesla owners have been showing this in the app, but if you've got a non-Tesla, this is a good way to track uh, what you're spending on electricity as well. So you can set up your utility rates in here. You can actually find your specific utility and it's gonna pull the information for you already. It's gonna pull the costs. So you don't have to worry about 
typing that in manually. But then if you go to, uh, if we change the units of measurement to currency, and then we change it to the month or even the year, you can see how much I've spent on charging my car. So just over the past, uh, let's see, if we change the graph, we can see this as well. Just over the past few weeks that I've been using a charger, I've only spent $7, but you can see if I expand that out to months and year, the time I've had the charger, it's around that $19 range. So I can see what I'm spending on charging in the app here, really nice. So let's wrap up with who is this charger for and who do I recommend this to? I think in general, if your car doesn't have a lot of these features built in for scheduling charging or seeing data about charging, I think this is a good option. The price point is pretty good as well at that 48 amp range. That's going to max out most vehicles. So good thing to check when you are looking at charging is what kind of power can your vehicle actually take. Most vehicles are around that 48 amp range or 11 and a half kilowatts. That's what Teslas are at. It's what most vehicles are at, only like the Ford Lightning and Hummer and some of these bigger, more uh, more high-end vehicles can charge above that. That aside, I think if your vehicle doesn't have a lot of these smart features and you want some of this scheduling and want to do that on the charger end instead of the vehicle end, this is a good option for you. I do have the Tesla one now to compare to, so I'm going to be doing some testing with that and stay tuned on the channel for a review on that as well. So that'll do it for the review of the Emporia Charger. If you have any questions about it or want to hear more about my experience there, just let me know down in the comments and I'll be happy to answer. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.